So in order to make use of your endpoint services and endpoints, you need to go to the VPC console. So this is our VPC console. And the last time we had already done uh, the demo for VPC endpoints. So I think you can visit that video as well and check out what exactly is VPC endpoint and how we have configured and how it actually works. So let's suppose we are the producers now. And the first thing that we have to do here is we have to create an endpoint service, isn't it? Uh, let's suppose we have an application that we want to host and we want to make it available as a service. So what we need to do, we need to create an endpoint service so that we can expose the service that we want, isn't it? On the left hand side, if you see, we have the virtual private cloud. The first one is endpoints and the second one that we have here is endpoint service. I told you we will have something called endpoint service. But if you go ahead and search for private link, you may not find anything there are no service called private link but you have endpoint services that's a vpc feature isn't it so if i click on this it exactly goes to this point i hope you're getting the point here so we'll come here and we'll click on endpoint services and then we'll click on create endpoint service so now that you see here, we don't have any load balancers connected to our VPC. So this is not showing anything right now. But the most important thing for us is to remember that we need a network load balancer and we can associate the private DNS with the service that we want to host. So as you can see here, to create endpoint service, you can use AWS private link to make services in your VPC available to other AWS accounts and VPCs. AWS Private Link is a highly scalable, available technology that enables private access to services across VPC boundaries. Other accounts and VPCs can create an VPC endpoint to access your endpoint service. That's what the whole idea of this is. Other accounts will create a VPC endpoint. You will create, being a producer, you will create an endpoint service and they will be able to access your service. That's it. And endpoint services can be created on network load balancers, gateway load balancers. We have now checked the network load balancer part. In the next session, I'll tell you about the gateway load balancer. So don't miss out on that. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe it right now. So the important difference between network load balancer and gateway load balancer from the connection point of view is services created on network load balancers or NLBs can be accessed using the interface endpoints, while services created on gateway load balancer or the GLBs are accessed using the GLB endpoints. So you have to remember this. Okay, I'll do a small demo. I'll not disappoint you here. Let's at least do the producer part. Let's create the endpoint. Okay, so we have three running instances here that I have stopped. So don't worry about that. We can create one. So we we'll launch instance, just select this, Amazon Linux. And here I'm selecting t2.micro and I'll select the my VPC demo and I'll choose the private subnet that I have. Okay, so this is fine for us. The storage is fine. I can just give it a name. So I can just name it as service EP, service endpoint. Okay, then configure the security groups. You can just create a new one. We are not going to do anything. So just leave it as it is and review and launch and launch here i can choose easy to access i have this key and just create a launch instance so now that our instance is going to be launched the next thing that we want to do is we need to go to the load balancer part and here you can create a new load balancer for yourself so just click on this here you see only three load balancers isn't it in Mumbai region that you have. So this is the classic load balancer. There's a previous generation one. There's a network load balancer and the application load balancer. So we have to create it for network load balancer, but the fourth one that you have, the gateway load balancer, it's not visible here. And if you switch the region to Oregon, you will be able to see that. Just switch the region to Oregon. Now you see it. Okay, so I'll just switch back to my region that I have and we'll be satisfied for now with the network load balancer because that is our requirement isn't it so let's create one so we have the network load balancer here i can just give my demo nlb as the name 
and uh, yeah internet facing or internal facing not a problem i can give it an internal facing and ipv4 this will be tcp balanced 80 and i'll choose my ppc demo and the private because this is my private subnet that i want to tag along and that's it i can just click on configure security groups just click on next you can create a new target group called uh, demo target group it can be with instance or with can ip but yeah instance is fine for us advanced cell checks not required just click on register targets this is the one that is already running so i can click on this one and add to register so now once i have added it to the network load balancer target list it will act as the network load balancer for this not a problem so we have added this that's the only part that was missing for us so now click on review and launch so these are the targets associated to the network load balancer this is the name of the network load balancer sorry sorry this is the name of the load balancer this is the name of the target group and this is the vpc that is pointing at and this is residing in the subnet of private subnet that we have okay so now just create a successfully created load balancer then just close it so now it is in the provisioning state integration status okay see this load balancer is not configured to any endpoint service so here also we can create an endpoint service and the tags so if it is in the provisioning state we can go back to the create endpoint service and we can see if a service or network load balancer is in a provisioning state whether it is able to showcase it in the drop down shall i go back and come back again yeah i can just go back and come back again see now it's showing right and uh, the status now is provisioning so yeah so this is something that we learnt today so if it is in the state of provisioning also it will be able to detect so now you can just click on demo nlb that is a network load balancer that you have so this includes the availability zone that we have and here you can associate a private dns name with the service if you have but i don't have any private dns names here so i will not associate it and i can name a tag here then i can just give it a name my point service okay and that's it i have associated a network load balancer which has the instance associated to it which is my service instance so if you have mentioned that and you have checked the box here then you have to manually make the decision of whether to accept the request or to reject the request so you have to consider this point very carefully so by default most of the times it's always true but it depends on how you are setting up your vpcs and how you are exposing your services so if you don't want to have to if you don't want to take the overhead of manually accepting these connections then you can just uncheck this okay so i think we are good here and you can just click on create service yeah so now your service is ready so this is the service name that you have so this is the service name that you have and this is the one that we are going to use so this is the interface type because we have used the network load balancer and now this is not associated to any aws service we have our own service that we have hosted so this will be used for that and uh, we have the network load balancer arn here acceptance required is yes and we have the vpc id here and yeah that's it we can just copy this service name remember this i'm copying the service name that we have here the service name i'll copy this and i'll go to my endpoints and here i'll create an endpoint so this one actually find service by name you can just paste it here and choose the default vpc because we have already created the endpoint service for my vpc demo okay just choose default vpc and just click on verify service name found okay so we've got the service so this service is available only in this availability zone so it's fine it is showing the all the details that we have and now the security groups that are attached to this is sg e6 ec6 f118 so that is also fine for us that's it once you have this you can just click on create endpoint and it will be created so i can add a tag here again name endpoint demo sorry 
endpoint demo and just click on create endpoint yeah your endpoint is created close okay so now it is showing pending as acceptance isn't it because we have checked the checkbox there to accept the request isn't it the acceptance criteria so let's go to the services endpoint services and endpoint connections it should show yeah here it has come this is the one and if i just right click or actions yeah accept or reject i can do it manually here so i can just click on accept endpoint connection request because it is my service so why should i hurt myself i'll just accept it isn't it now as you can see we have refreshed this and this is an available state yeah that's great isn't it so now it is available and the one thing that we need to understand here is if it is an accepted state then it should have created a elastic interface elastic network interface isn't it so that's what i wanted to check so i, I can go back to the ec2 instance that we have uh, the ec2 management console oh, i have it here itself so i can just refresh this okay so here we have where is that network interface yeah network interfaces it should have created one for us so this is this vpc should have a endpoint id associated to the interface that we have created the network interfaces yeah see here so we have the network interfaces here so now what we can do is we can just copy this and we can see the network interface list that we have and you can just paste here yeah so this is the one that has been created now okay so now this is the interface that has been created for us so it takes a bit of time to actually create the vpc endpoint interface so if i just click on search yeah so this is the interface name so you have the endpoint interface here vpce i'll just copy this and i'll show you that this is the one that we are currently using see this is the one this is the endpoint and that is what it is trying to refer to so this i did not create manually this will get created once you create an endpoint okay so now what we have done we have achieved a lot in this one so we have created the endpoint service for us and we have created the endpoint when we have also associated both of them and we have given the acceptance criteria as false as true sorry so that we can manually accept or reject the connections so i think that was clear isn't it so if you wish to do this you can do this as well but make sure that you delete all the connections as and when you create them so that you don't have any billing problems so that is what i am going to do right now so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to delete this endpoint service first so this is the endpoint service and i'm going to delete this i don't want to face any i'll just delete the endpoint connection first so delete this endpoint okay so first we are going to delete this and we're going to go to the endpoint service we have the endpoint we don't have any endpoint connections now we can just click on the my ap service and we can just delete the endpoint service as well so now we are clear from this we don't have any endpoints we don't have any endpoint service and we'll go back to the instances and there's the only running instance that we have we'll just terminate this okay so just terminate this instance we have to just clean up everything because this is not our company sponsored video so we will incur a lot of bills for this and i think we have learned a lot today and i hope you will also try to do this by yourself by watching the videos and you will try to learn how to do this yourself as well okay so let's move on then